take it away. Well, I've spent a lot of time the last, what is it, when were we together? 20 hours ago? Yeah. Thinking about referees. <laughs> <laughs> Greg's getting really nervous right now. <laughs> no, I'm good. This refereeing is a hard job. It is a hard, hard job. And um, it's, uh, you know, um, especially in this competitive league that we're playing in right now where players are so talented and so athletic and so skilled and the venues are so loud and there's so much pressure. And um, so I spent a lot of time thinking about referees. And last night we played Baylor at Baylor in a great game. And we had an unbelievable crew, like a really, really good crew. Um, Jerry Pollard is as good as they come, and Kip Kissinger is a great, and Amy Pollard. Amy uh, Bonner. Amy, I'm sorry, yeah, Amy yeah. Bonner is, uh, you know, she, I think she's one of only two female referees to ever uh, ref in the Final Four, which is yeah. so amazing. And I actually had, I had a few, a few more interactions with that crew than I normally have recently. In fact, one time we're coming to a timeout and they uh, had just been a no call on down hall driving baseline. And um, Amy Bonner was on the baseline and uh, she told me her version of what happened. And I told her my version of what happened. And then um, we kind of went on with our life and, and then watching the film, her version was 100% correct. Mm. They're really good, man. These referees are really good, as frustrating as that might be sometimes. Um, not perfect because it's an impossible job, but they're really good. So last night, the game kind of came down to the wire. It's in a it's in an important moment, and um, and uh, and there was a, a very crucial call that could have gone either way. You trapped at half court. We're talking about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trapped at half court. You know, we felt like we had uh, you know four hands, defensive hands on the ball, kind of tied up. Everybody stopped playing. And, um, and Jerry made a call, which is, which is, you know, the call. I can definitely argue that it was the right call or the wrong call, but he made the call. And I felt some frustration, and I turned around uh, to the bench, and my water was there. <laughs> and yeah, Hammond, did you? Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, Hammond's we go. good. <clears throat> yeah, Mark and I were in the splash zone there. <laughs> well, if you look at this, though, this is what I'm interested in looking at. So Greg looks like he just got shot. And Mark <laughs> has got this um, really beautiful grin on his face <laughs> that he's trying to hide right now. And if you look to the right, you can see Keegan Brown, our analytics guy, who's not allowed to have any emotion whatsoever. And clearly, he has no reaction to what just happened. Yeah. <laughs> and so I don't know who is this is Dasani must be. It's a sponsor or somehow. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I was thinking afterwards, you know, Dasani, I'm sure it's some type of um, climate awareness, uh, global health issue. But there, I, I learned this last night that there, you know, the cap was screwed on. I thought everything was going to be fine. Yeah. And, um, but these are very uh, thin, it's very thin plastic. It's probably yeah. good for the world, but it was yeah. bad for me last night. Yeah, maybe not as sturdy as they were in years past. And so, uh, a little more easily destructible. So we yeah. actually, you know, this is how complicated our life is in coaching circles. Um, we had a whole staff meeting this, uh, <laughs> this morning about um, getting a more firmer plastic water bottle uh, <laughs> on the bench to keep me out of harm's way. I just see you like see you with the Stanley Cup on the. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Those are really sturdy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the Stanley that might be too dangerous. It's, it's got to. It can't. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, not my finest moment, but uh, my sincerest apologies for the. Shower. No, we, we just game. we just motored right on through like nothing Usually happened. we do that in celebration. <laughs> yes, you, you have. No, really. You, we've seen a lot of you in locker rooms yes. with the caps off and we're going nuts yes. in a good way. Yes. Yeah. I'm not complaining about Dasani. Beautiful product. Yep. <laughs> we love Dasani bottle water. <laughs> All right. That's a great way to start the show. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, you know, it's, it's listen. These games, we all are pulling so hard and competing so hard, and and uh, this refereeing is a thankless job. But um, like I said, a really terrific crew last night, and we're grateful for the work of all these referees and the things that they do. And it's not, a, it's a thankless job. It really is. But um, pros up and down, and uh, really, you know, pretty exciting. 
we as uh, the best teams in the country get to have our games worked by the best uh, referees in the country. Right. Um, and Leanne is totally on board with all of those sentiments right now. <laughs> Hi, Leanne. Good to have you back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I'm saying that sincerely. Yeah. I really am. No, we really, yeah, when you get yep. to the Big 12, you, you get some of the bigger yep. names in the yep. game, if you will, in terms of officiating, guys yep. who've been around a long time working at the yep. highest levels. And so what we've done is, is you know, we, we, haven't, uh, we haven't, we have done a bad job winning the whistle over the last two games. And so we did a, uh, all night last night, we did a, and, and this morning did a really in-depth review of kind of how we can um, how we can appease the whistle better, and we're going to make some progress there. And we're really excited about that. And that's one of the thousands of facets of the game that are really important. Okay, you're into the Big 12 grind. You're two games into an 18-game regular season slate. Early impressions of what you've seen so far in this league? It's everything we hope for. It's awesome. Like um, this is this is really exciting. And and when you face the best competition every night, it kind of rips you to shreds and and bears your soul and gives you a chance to grow and. The games are so fun. I mean, listen, we've been on the Louisiana two games right now, um, and and it's so fun to go compete, and it's so fun to know that Saturday is going to be the same thing. And then when do we play after that? Next Tuesday, and it just it just is never ending. It's awesome. Like this is the greatest thing ever. You had seventeen thousand fans in your building for the Cincy game on the weekend. Then you go on the road in a smaller, more intimate venue, but seventy five hundred fans packed in on you yeah. in the new Foster Pavilion. Two really great game night environments. One at home, one on the road to get things yep. underway. Yep, it's incredible. Part of the Big Twelve. I was watching uh, the UCF Kansas game before we came on the show. Uh, Kansas had a 16-point lead in the first half, and when I came in, yep. uh, UCF was up a point, I yeah. think. So here we go. Yeah, it's a, this UCF team is—they're terrific. They're, they're they when you watch the film, I mean, they are big and long. It, it reminds me of the Florida State teams from the mm -hmm. last decade that are just—they're um, just so big, and and uh, they play really, really hard. They're one of the top uh, turnover forcing teams in the country um, and they fit in the Big 12 and so it's on. By the way on the building you were just in last night uh, BYU is the largest building in in the Big 12 and this is one of the smaller venues but they've done it in such a way that it feels big. If that yeah means, yeah uh, hopefully you guys all come to the game next year um, because it really is a special venue. I mean it is uh, it is the biggest most magnificent 7500 person venue I've ever seen. It really is fantastic and they did a great job uh, fitting exactly the niche that will work for them and and it's pretty great. And, and I, I said this last night on air, but it's pretty special. You, you know, um, you know, Scott Drew is is uh, one of the elite coaches in in basketball and um, and what he's done at Baylor, if you know the history of Baylor, he took over a program that was in, in like unspeakable duress and um, just stayed, stayed there and had some early success and then just kept working away and working away and working away. And 17 years later, he did the unthinkable and won a national championship there. And 20, 21 years later, he opened a brand new building. And it's, it's pretty cool, man. It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, he's, he's really made his mark on basketball and certainly on Baylor forever. And something I found during the football season of Big 12, the hospitality is real. Yeah. Saw it last night. They're happy to have BYU as part of this yes. league. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, man, we fit in this league because us going there felt a lot like I think people feel when they come to the Marriott Center. Unbelievable environment, uh, a ton of noise, all kind of distractions, but the kindest people you could ever meet and the greatest hospitality. And, and um, like we step between the lines and fight like crazy and then we step off the lines and it's just good people. And um, certainly a, a huge thanks to all the people that, um, you know, work the Baylor games and, and were so courteous to us. A couple of housekeeping items. Uh, well, first of all, the reason we're on a Wednesday this week for the only week this season, uh, your travel will send you back east tomorrow, correct? Yeah, so uh, we practice early tomorrow morning again, and then we'll jump on a plane and land in Orlando uh, 8 or 9 o'clock tomorrow night and, and uh, then have a full day's prep on Friday and, and uh, game on Saturday. Two time zone trips, so you want to get out there usually a day ahead, right? Yeah, yep. especially for this one just because the, the travel is pretty extensive. And it's an early game also on Saturday, yeah. relatively speaking. Uh, we got to Waco without Dawson Baker this yeah. week, uh, and you said there could be some, some, some movement on a decision on what his season's going to look like. Any, any, anything there? Yeah, it's not final, final, but it's, it's heavily looking like he's going to ha have to have surgery again. And so we'll see. Um, you know, we should get final word here in the next 24 hours, but that's the way it looks right now, and, mm. and, and we'll see. That's tough. That's tough. Yeah. Uh, he would have really helped you guys. It was helping you guys. Yeah, what you he could do. It's you know? interesting about Dawson because he never, you know, he was so he was so fantastic for two or three games, and and um, 
and but he was never even close to full capacity and he actually brings a very very different slice to our team his ability to kind of turn hips and get downhill at will without needing an action or anything else is is pretty special and um, so if it, if it does turn out that he can't help us this year uh, he's certainly going to be a, a huge piece for us moving forward and the, and the hope would be he has two more years as a yep. Cougar right that's right that'd be great uh, and as you lose one guy you're getting one guy back and into the swing of things Fuseni Traore yeah. made it Another good step last night. Yeah, I thought Foose was great. Um, you know, he uh, he was really effective in the post. Um, I wish we could have got him more catches in the post. Uh, you know, he was put in some challenging situations where we were switching one through five on ball screens and ball interchanges, and and uh, he held his ground really, really well in the time that he was in the game. So a huge step forward for him since Cincinnati, and, and hopefully he'll make another uh, huge jump uh, in preparation for Central Florida. And in a really general sense, through two games of Big 12 play, how do you feel your personnel match up with the teams you've seen? We are, um, we're different. We're, we're our own entity. Uh, we have our own strengths, uh, our, our, our own identity, and, and, um, but we're going to have some success in this league, and, and there's no place we would rather be. And, and um, with all of the complications and competitiveness that comes with it and, and all the humility that comes with it, we're exactly where we've always wanted to be. And, and um, we, we, you know, we came into this knowing how challenging this was going to be. We also came in feeling like we have a good team, a team that's capable. And we're going to continue to get better and better and better. And, and this is going to be a really fun uh, regular season and postseason and see what we can do. Well, since we last got together here in Studio C, BYU played two games. Home game against Cincy last Saturday and at Baylor, of course, last night. Let's get coaches' thoughts on some of these highlights and stats presented by Intermountain Health. Now, the Saturday game was a setback to the Bearcats. We're going to focus more on the work of Trevin Nell. This was a career night for Trevin Nell. He had a special night on Saturday night, scored 27 points, uh, career-high nine three-pointers. And this is a guy that just didn't do it on Saturday. He's, yeah. he's had a really strong stretch for quite a while now. This is, um, you know, Trevin now keeps kind of turning more corners as in his development as a player. And he's done two things. You know, he's been an elite level shooter uh, ever since he came uh, into college. But he's doing it different now. Um, he, is, he is ridiculously aggressive. Uh, he's got a really, really quick trigger, and he is becoming less and less phased by making a shot, which that doesn't sound like a big deal, but that's the definition of a shooter. Um, you know, he had a really interesting stint uh, through Utah and maybe the game after, the game before, where he was 0 for 9, 0 for 10 straight three-point shots. And I think actually that experience has been a real gift to him in his maturity. Uh, because now he's not scared of runs like that. Like he, he understands how dangerous he is and he's making a huge difference for us. That's on the offensive side of the shooter. On the defensive side of the ball, man, he's had some unbelievable performances and he's grown exponentially on the defensive side of the ball. The numbers you see there on the offensive side, the 143s, that's after last night's three more. So he climbs into the top 15. And then the game he had uh, was one of the singular games. It's a Marriott Center record nine threes. And again, when you get up to near double digits, you're in rarefied air. And he put himself in some pretty, uh, pretty special uh, territory uh, on the weekend, no doubt. And he keeps it going. He's had, uh, I think, 10, 11 games this year with multiple yep. threes. He can, get, he can get hot. You know, it's interesting. So since Trevin got here, every day in practice, we've talked about this, he's an 80% plus uh, three-point shooter in practice, 80% plus, and it's every day. That's not on a good day. That's every single day. And so, you know, he 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 developed that skill over the course of the last two decades, and then actually implementing that into the games as at the level he's doing. Most people never approach, but um, he's been spectacular. And, I, you know, I, I'm telling you, everybody that tries to prep a scout for us is, is having real conversations about what do you do with Trevor Nell. He's a problem. Let's get to Baylor then from last night. It was number 18, BYU, at number 14, Baylor, to start the week. We'll take a look at highlights from uh, last night at Foster Pavilion. A couple of ranked teams going head-to-head. -head and, uh, I mean, this was – it wasn't until the last minute of the game, Coach, where there was a double-digit lead. This was tight throughout. Yeah, it's, it's fun to see Dallin Hall's progression – uh, squeezing that extra dribble in. I know that doesn't mean a lot to, to us, but it means a huge deal to a point guard. Um, really great execution on that 93. We actually had a team bet going on if we'd get a bucket out of that. Ali Khalifa, uh, you know, again was a 6-2 guy, six assists, two turnovers, and, and really his turnovers are, are because we bail out of cuts, right? He's actually making the pass and we don't finish cuts. Um, you know, he had a huge impact on the game on both ends of the floor. Uh, I thought our guys put together a great effort. Um, 
you know, down the stretch, uh, we were kind of hit or miss in terms of our execution. Literally, it was almost it was almost a good offensive set, and then this, the next one would be a poor decision making that didn't feel like us. And the same thing on the defensive end, and we just weren't quite consistent enough down the stretch to get the win. BYU falls by a score of 81 to 72. The Bears go to 2 and 0, and BYU drops to 0 and 2 in league. The uh, the nine threes only the second time this year you've had under 10 threes, yeah. and the 24. Uh, takes is a season low for you this year. Yeah, we were disappointed with the 24. Um, to, you know, today Coach Fieger in his film session today with the team um, kind of highlighted a bunch of opportunities where we turn down shots uncharacteristically for us. And it's really important, you know, us playing 27 by 50, we talk about all the time. It's very, very important to what we do. And um, and in almost all of the circumstances where we turned down an open shot, we ended up the possession with something worse. Mm. And that's high level basketball. That's very much NBA basketball. It's like when you get your first one, you have to take it because nine times out of 10, if you keep hunting, you're not gonna get something better before the shot clock expires. And, and um, that's the way we feel in this Big 12. And, and it's the way we've been approaching this game and we need to stay strong, continue to, to, to attack that way. So the number was 24 last night, but when you look at it, there were more than 24 there for you. Could have been yeah. closer to your Absolutely. what you want to be. Yeah, it was just uncharacteristically we turned some down.